thank you that uh, nevai chan sir and nevai sir like here yeah. so you a very good uh, good evening to you all you are all welcome of we have of central library as well as the district of the library network too so this is the today is the day two of our consecutive three days national level research and academic skill development program so as you know in general we are organize such kind of special session throughout the throughout the year basically twice in a month but this year this special three session is very unique in nature because three speakers are very prominent and very renowned in ai skill uh, throughout the country so yesterday we have completed our day 1 uh, of our uh, topic and today we are going to answers lu waiting for listening that today's topic on digital rights management in ip regime by dr none other than manish kumar bajpai librarian dr rml national law university lucknow india so before going to deliberation by dr bajpai ji so may i request our beloved and respected as senior assistant librarian dr ajay kumar sharma in charge of abhavana library additional responsibility in the abhavana library for introduce with today's speaker ajay da please so a very good afternoon to all i welcome on behalf of the vishwati library network it is my honor today to introduce a remarkable personality who has made significant contribution to the field of library and information please allow me to present dr manish bajpay jp librarian and also in charge librarian in charge at the esteemed dr ram manohar lohia national law university lucknow dr bajpay is distinguished whose passion for literature research and education has propelled him to the forefront of his profession with an extensive background in the library science he possesses a wealth of knowledge and expertise that has proven invaluable to the academic community having obtained his doctoral degree in library and information science dr bachpay has devoted his career to advancing the role of libraries in promoting learning and facilitating access to information as a deputy librarian at the ram manohar lohia national law university he has played a pivotal role in transforming the university library library into a vibrant hub of intellectual engagement of, and discovery he has working experience in this field for more than 17 years He is a specialization a specialization in web 2.0 digital library innovative library services open access and law library under dr bajpay guidance the library has witnessed remarkable growth in the term of its resources services and technological infrastructure he has developed an ultra modern law library madhu limaya library with rfid web centric library automation Lab for visually impaired, institutional repository, video conferencing, and digital library, etc. His research has published in international journals, Web of Science and UGC Peer Reviewed Journal. He also contributed to edited books too. Dr. Bhaskari has credited for authoring. Thank you, Ajay Ji, and it's uh, uh, after a very long time we are 
uh, interacting again. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, to the Vishwa Bharati Central Library, especially uh, Dr. Nimai Chand Sahaji, for his, you know, uh, such a wonderful initiative to taking uh, uh, three days national workshop on research and academics skill development program. It's actually wonderful, and I saw uh, all these uh, three topics are very, very, uh, uh, very, very important for uh, present scenario, especially in the digital environment. So it's a great initiative, and again, I would like to congratulate and also thankful uh, to your team for uh, considering my name uh, to share my experience on the topic and. Uh, and uh, have uh, some information to share with you all. So friends, as you all all aware that we all are living in a digital environment. And I would say not only a digital environment, even we are taking breath in a, a digital way because uh, we all are uh, using mobile phones and smartphones and uh, even uh, we are in a bathroom, we are also trying to, to take our mobile phone into the bathrooms. Even during the lunch, dinner, breakfast, or any activity, we, we all are involved. So you see that all, all the information is now communicated on a digital environment. The traditional way of uh, transforming the information, the communication information is drastically changed. See, uh, say for example, earlier we were fond of reading newspapers every day in the morning. Still we are trying to do that, but we are the, uh, you can say the, gen the present generation is more comfortable in, in accessing the information or to, to go through the newspapers in a digital uh, forms of information formats. So the entire segment is changed and academia is also comes in the purview of the digital environment we use to read, study content or research content or study contents like books, journal articles of the journals, articles in newspapers, magazines, uh, research reports, etc. and etc. So always there been a challenge of using information or misusing information or using a right information or searching a right information or delivering a right information. These are kind, these kinds of challenges not only uh, uh, with the uh, stakeholders like the students who are the users of uh, these content, faculty members, research scholars, but also the facilitators like uh, libraries and, and, and the stakeholders who are working in the dissemination of information, communication. I'm talking more about uh, in the academic purview. And you see that the publishers are also worried uh, about their content that there, that should not be misused or, or you know, uh, mishandled. So in, in that all context, digital rights management is one of the powerful right, which is very, very uh, useful for the publishers, for the information creators, for the stakeholders like libraries who are involved in dissemination and communication of information, as well as the uh, end users like the students, research scholars, and the faculty members. 
so you see first uh, before drm we must understand uh, the intellectual property what is intellectual property and you know uh, what are the you know the parts of these intellectual property and then then the copyright issue and then we can understand the digital rights management because digital rights management is more for the publishers because none of the research scholars or the information seekers uh, may happy to to access the information under digital rights management purview but that is also another aspect that publishers are the information creators uh, actually want to protect their information to to protect their legal rights so i just want to share my ppt yeah you can um, share sir okay i hope it is now visible at your side yes yes sir yes, yes. okay so digital rights management in ipr regime i intentionally taken this this topic uh, in ipr regime because uh, right now uh, while the digital content or the digital uh, data data or the information is created digitally right now it is not it is not like uh, you know retro conversion or etc it is created digitally it is published digitally and even it is communicated digitally you can see after the covid 19 many of the publishers are providing access to their journals in an online mode only so there are a lot of things to discuss with you so first you see what is the intellectual property so intellectual property you see that it refers to creations of the mind such as inventions literary and artistic works designs and symbols names and images used in commerce so anything which is created by using of intellect is 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 a by product of the intellectual property and intellectual property is actually an umbrella where every uh, intellect output is managed and dealt with some other laws so intellectual property law you see that intellectual property is there when law comes to protect you protect the creators rights inventors rights there uh, it may be their intellectual rights it may be their commercial rights it may be their economic rights but there are some rights and if they are going to be protected and they are going to be protected by some kind of law so there are several laws which brings under one umbrella and that is intellectual property uh, that is called intellectual property rights and intellectual property uh, laws related to the intellectual property you see if if we something like trademarks if if you have designed any logo anything which is very specific to commercial importance and and you have to get protection of your creation for example vishwabharati university or vishwabharati library they having their own logo and that logo is actually registered with the trademark so nobody can can misuse it and that is governed with the trademark act 1999 then you see the patent if you have invented something and that is of the uh, of the society or the uh, the, uh, the country used or the human being used and but it is already it is also having having the commercial commercial you know uh, benefits also so you want to protect uh, that for that the patents act 1999 
1970 is there and recently not you can see the latest uh, amendment on the patent act was in two happened in 2005 i am talking all about the indian indian law uh, because every country is having their own law for example copyright so so us is having a digital millennium copyright act so india is having indian copyright act that is nine it came in 1957 we'll, uh, we'll discuss in detail about the copyright because in academia copyright uh, act is very very instrumental in 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 protecting uh, the creators our uh, literary and artistic uh, rights and then there is you know industrial design and and layout design these two two uh, different concepts are are being uh, you know governed with the are uh, protected the rights of such creators through the design act 2000 and there is a trade secret and geographical indications of goods act 1999 is there for for protecting such rights so all these uh, five uh, acts or laws are on the part of intellectual property and different different creations and inventions uh, are are being protected through these these laws and you see one one another uh, sorry one one more act or law is the protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act it came in 2001 and that is again a trade secret for example dasheri aam so dasheri mango is is one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the variety actually it's it's a fruit variety and it, it it found uh, it is found in one part of the country and that is very very scarce like lucknow then another is chicken so chicken which we actually not um, not the food item is a wearable item so chicken curry is 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 one of the variety one of the trade secret of this zone that is from again lucknow so it is gi indication you say so it is gi tag also gets so these are the trade secrets and these protections are governed with the uh, you know the plants are uh, governed with the protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act 2001 and and jo geographical indications are like geographically uh, you know important they are import uh, geographically geographically uh, variety of global importance are governed with this law then we come to the copyright so as you all aware that the copyright actually is a author's right is a legal term used to describe the rights that creators have over their literary and artistic work and what are the works which are covered under the copyright they may be a book music paintings sculpture films computer programs databases advertisements maps and technical drawings these all are you see if you in, in a longer purview you can see that all are from are all even uh, even used by the academician the academia the student research scholar faculty member and so on are they are created by them so all all these are actually the uh, literary work and that is that is and and performance work both these are governed with the copyright law that is indian copyright law so what does uh, the copyright uh, owner is having a rights if uh, are uh, on their creativity reproduction first of all they are having a right of reproduction whether they want to reproduce a content or not reproduction can be done in any medium but there that rights 
that rights are uh, you know this right is uh, is with uh, the owner or the copyright holder then distribution how they may distribute it in a in a online platform they want to distribute it they want to dis distribute in a you know in a print version or photocopy is allowed or not so kind of distribution uh, rights they are having and derivation means change any change in 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 the original work performance and paternity again these are uh, performance and paternity is related to 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 the like uh, the performing arts like music painting etc and for computer programs databases etc etc so copyright is actually actually it pure uh, simply it gives legal rights to protect to protect creators creative that's it so if you talk about the indian copyright act so it is called the indian copyright act of 1957 it means first it was drafted and passed and implemented in 1957 and by the time you know the amendment has been done in this uh, act 1984 it was uh and the 19 92 94 and recently uh, our very latest amendment has been done in 2012 that is 2012 in 2012 you see these three uh, blue highlighted part is been uh, added like works in which copyright subsides and the licenses by owners of copyrights and infringement of copyright these are the latest amendments in these three chapters chapter 3 chapter 6 and chapter 11 is been recently recently you know in 2012 made some some good amendments now so this is brief about the copyright act indian copyright act what is copyright i have already discussed that it is the creators a yeah, creators right to protect their creativity with any kind of infringement or any kind of harm like economic harm or the you know distribution harm or the misuse the handling etc and etc duplication there are so many aspects then digital rights management if you see the digital rights management there are three terms one is digital another is rights and management digital what is any content which is uh, which is created in a digital form or it is communicated or distributed or disseminated in a digital form everything you know everything is covered even medium is protected and then rights because the 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 creator of the digital content is also having some rights and all the rights which we have already discussed in the copyright act where the copyright owner is having all the rights are there in the digital rights management and then the management how he can manage their content how he has to allow another anyone to use that content so it is all about to 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 create a content in a digital format and to protect their rights and to manage that digital content so digital rights management is a way to protect copyrights for a digital media this approach includes the use of technologies that limit the copying and use of copyrighted works and proprietary software so i uh, when i started this this uh, deliberation i already told you and shared that digital rights management is more about the publisher's rights actually 
because publishers are very much afraid about the duplication of their content or misuse of their content or you know uh, use or, or the content that is subscribed by the by the different institutions or individuals may be uh, may be not used in appropriation they, they may be using one for example if if a individual user is having a license of single user license and if he is sharing uh, this that license with many of their school and friend or anyone a family member and they are using in different different time of course in different time but that is again a misuse so to protect kind of you know misuse of uh, information communication and distribution uh, especially in case of the proprietary products or software or databases or content digital rights management is very very important you must have seen that many of the publishers are now saying that their content is drm free content for example oxford university press they are claiming that their content are either its ebooks or either their journals database they are drm cambridge is also cambridge university press is also uh, claiming that their content is whatever the online content they are providing through various uh, portals that is a drm free so in a drm free there are two generations uh, usually uh, talked uh, by many uh, researchers and academicians that is one is uh, no, limited copying the, that is called the generation 1 and then the generation 2 is limited acts so for example somebody uh, you are you are having access to the some of the resources in your library or for your students and faculty members and they are saying that okay you can you can get it but you cannot download all the documents or whatever your subscription you are having you can you can download only 10% and you can copy only 5% and then again the limited access only 5 user can access only 20 user can access or the or user can access particular user can access uh, this much of database only and the other another and uh, one can use this much of the database are uh, the groups you can see uh, say for example ug students can use this much of data and pg this much after for example you can a uh, single uh, uh, individual user may have only 50 mb uh, data they can download every day uh, content of size of content they can download from a particular publisher's website or the database um, so that that is also a limited access and that comes in the generation 2 then you see the indian uh, copyright copyright act 1957 has made two very important amendments uh, in 2012 that is the in in the the precisely they precisely explained uh, that protection of technological measures in section 65a so it is is the in a section 65a it is more uh, to the publishers friendly uh, section because they are giving all their all their uh, they are this section is giving all freedom to these these guys to protect uh, their data um, they can use uh, uh, any technology to protect their data from misusing or mishandling even for even uh, any even for academic purposes too and section 65b is tempering of rights management information and that is again uh, this is this this one is actually very much useful uh, for the libraries uh, indirectly i would say 
because it allows it allows libraries to to make use of any content for 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 their you know members of the patterns of the their institution which are you know visually impaired impaired are uh, they are the special child uh, you know especially able people so they can they can uh, temper that that rights has been given to to manage that kind of information so you see there are three three wings in any any drm if you see the drm that is one is ipr so intellectual property rights that is because content is there so content has the content creator is having having their you know uh, their rights to protect their data and to protect that data there is a technological protection there are many uh, many technologies there are like water marking uh, you know um, there is you know has technologies there and technique is there and encryption is there so any any kind of uh, you know technology they can use and protect their digital content in misuse or mishandling or uh, any any rough dissemination and the third one is licenses and contracts we all are in you know in a world of digital content accessibility whether we are downloading for example whatsapp messenger you are trying to download it and uh, install it without without agreeing to the license of the any online product you cannot download you cannot install i'm sorry you even you can download it but you cannot install in your system whether it is uh, your mobile phone or whether it is you know your computer machine or laptop machine so every digital content is having embedded license and contract agreement to access whether on behalf of the user a student a member of the institution any authority is signing that license it may be a librarian it may be a registrar it may be a vice chancellor or any committee chairperson maybe but every digital content is embedded through a digital license and contract of using that license even it is you know uh, even uh, it is uh, a creative common license it is one again once again a mix that uh, uh, open access resources are uh, free from the copyright no none of the digital content whether it is in a open access whether whether it is in a creative common environment they are not free from any kind of copyright there are copyrights and there are license agreements and there are some 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 you know excuses where you can you can get away with the uh, with the you know commercial contract agreements but of course every digital content whether it is commercial free open access it is having a license thread to use it so there are again uh, if you have a digital content then you there are four aspects with uh, every digital content one is packaging distribution license acquisition and license survey because in a digital rights management you see while the content is created then packaging is one of the aspect where digital rights management is sort of taken care of how the content or the product or the digital product will be make available how it will be looks like what will be its feeling while you are using it whether it is a ebook package in a ebook format or a 
ई जर्नल फॉर्मेट आर ऑनलाइन फॉर्मेट आर इन एच टी एम एल फॉर्मेट आर इन पी डी एफ फॉर्मेट आर इन एम एस वर्ल्ड फॉर्मेट आर ओपन ऑफिस फॉर्मेट एनी फॉर्मेट बट पैकेजिंग इज डिसाइडेड देन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द एक्सेस मॉडल whether it is the subscription model what is, whether it is a one time purchase model uh, whether it is a user wise model or it will be distributed in a single user or in a multiple users or a user id you know so individual user authentication model or in a ip based access model or you know the static uh, institutional ip model or it may be in a cloud based ip model so it again it's matter of distribution because packaging is all about to how a product a digital product will be presented in a usable form distribution is like how it will be communicated how it will be distributed or you know uh, uh, giving to the access to to the and user the third one is the license acquisition and the fourth one is license service license acquisition is actually the content sometimes uh, you know it's like uh, you need inheritance of uh, of some bundle of the software like if you are using uh, using in your desktop so desktop is booted through a operating system so that is the that in in that way license acquisition comes into the picture because every digital content when it is created some you know automatic uh, license acquisition has been done because every digital content has to run in specific digital devices and different digital devices are using different operating systems it may be android system it may be a macintosh it may be a apple system or i uh, io system or a windows system or a linux system any system and then license serving license serving is directly related to how a end user will get this license and this license is designed for the end user that you are agreeing with all the uh, you know uh, license or the contract of this this product that you will not share it you will not copy it you will not download it you will not and uh, misuse it you will use it for only for the academic purposes or for the commercial purposes or for all it, it all it, it is all uh, you know written there and also that this license is for this purpose only and and if there is any dispute then in which court or which country court will be uh, you know uh, you may contact to or you may go to this court only. for example we are subscribing lexus nexus academic universe now it is called lexus asia so uh, lex or lexus advanced online database so for lexus advanced uh, database we while we are signing on this we if we have any dispute we have to rush to the american courts only the license is running in india but the server the license acquisition is at us and and if we have any dispute then we have to so all these are mentioned and these are the aspects while while you are managing your digital content all these aspects are taken care of so what uh, what uh, you know publishers are the creators do to secure their digital content so water marking we all you know, you know see that uh, some of the databases like scc online are using watermarking technology while you are downloading any content uh, from there and if you take print out of it at the background they will 
you will find that FCC online is there and their license number is there. So uh, they can do with this one. Encryption is, is very, very powerful because encryption is there and decryption is there. So if they are codifying their security, so there is a D code also, a D code key is there. So that is used to decrypt the data. And then digital certificates, you all know that you can sign it digitally and create your account. Uh, you know, uh, you see that uh, in income tax, I, uh, you know, form 16 while you are getting it, I have to, to fill out the ITR, you are, you may be getting it, you know, digitally signed by your finance company. So it is because to, to secure that document. Licensing control and access control. It is again like for you are if you are subscribing any digital content, they may be giving you an RIP access or for five users or six users, or you can have some restrictions. You cannot download more than two MB of file or ten MB of file and so on. So there are many, many control is provided to provide that kind of access. Uh, most of the libraries are using, I think, licensing control and access control system and public because uh, libraries and uh, users are very much comfortable in this system. And rights specification language that is also used, and you see that it, rights specification language is more or less used in you know in on uh, you know. In, in a com chatting, you know, uh, data chatting uh, software programs. And you see that uh, right now uh, messengers are, you know, one to end, end to end encryption is there, which means that all the content is encrypted. You see that uh, if you find, uh, if you use, uh, Supreme Court of India website, and if you download any content from there, they, they, there is an automatic captcha is there, and you have to fill that captcha, and then only you can download it. Actually, that is the encryption that for that uh, content, and that is automatically generated. Uh, you know that kind of encryption and decryption, and then hashing is there. So hashing is again an algorithm is used protected data and uh, has key is issued by the publishers and the content creators or other the firms who are protecting that kind of data so the, these are uh, these are the, some ways to protect uh, uh, secure or uh, secure uh, digital contents and that is part of DRM so what are the drawbacks because the technology is giving uh, all rights to the publishers or the creators and, and, and for end users also, because end users may be satisfied that they are getting the authentic information and authentic data from the authentic source of information. But the end user cannot take backups of such content if it is not drm free because while uh, the information or the content is not drm free then it means you have to read all the license agreement and the contract agreement with the publisher or in that license whether uh, downloading is allowed or backups are allowed or not generally they do not allow to take backups. And lending of material. You see for the libraries, libraries are more, uh, more or less engaged with the lending of the documents, especially in the print documents. You can, uh, every library is uh, sharing uh, their print resources with the student in a specific uh, environment. In with set uh, the permission of set of rules of that particular institution's library, but all uh, more or less uh, almost all libraries are busy are engaged in lending of material. But 
even they are subscribing any data they cannot cannot you know uh, share it means uh, for example um, that is one service uh, i'm just uh, you know sometimes you uh, slip uh, from your mind uh, uh, that is uh, interlibrary loan so library that engaged uh, in interlibrary loan to uh, to to facilitate information or the content to other uh, institutions libraries or the users in some set of rule under the some set of rules but under the drm you cannot do that and the third uh, very important part is limits material as a fail actually it does not allow even even a content uh, for the research and academic purposes because if it is not drm free you cannot go you cannot give it to any other you cannot share it so these are three most vulnerable uh, drawbacks uh, in, in uh, for 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 the users of such content or academic content so why uh, if there is a lot of there sorry there are some um, major drawbacks so how how we can come up to these challenges so there is only the challenge if there is a challenge then there is some rescues are also so drm alternatives we can use it for example open source software we can use we can use open operating systems like linux or linux in other versions and uh, and the resources we are who are under uh, gnu uh, project that we can do and and we can start with uh, the copy left idea anyone can leave uh, their copyright from their content so their content can be used or we can bring more content more data under open access system or creative common licenses uh with download free and share free model so that 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 could be that could be one of the one of the uh alternative to free from the drm uh that's why uh, that's why you know um, the academic institution objected that uh, the content which we are subscribing subscribing we are not able to download it or print it or uh, share it uh, for the research and academic purposes so some of the society or the university publications like you know uh, cambridge university press and uh, oxford university press and sage also started drm free contact to contents to 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 provide access to the academic institutions so you see the uh, fair use there is you know why fair use is very important because the commercial value of original is not diminished if we, if some content is having a commercial value but you are not you are using in such a way that their commercial value is not going to diminish it means you are using that content in a fair use manner then new work is predominantly original product of user it means if you have making some changes you must give credit to the original creator of that benefit to user is predominantly other than commerce means for example if a faculty of your institution is downloaded one article and shared with the students of their class only then that is a fair use but if that article is downloaded and shared with each uh, student of the institution then it is not a fair use new work may be used for the critics satire or education like we all know that we are 
the newspapers you can see there and uh, many uh, social media network under many social media networks uh, you know like facebook linkedin and twitter content is used a small portion of original material is used yes for example uh, there is a book book of 300 pages if you are taking 10 pages 20 pages for your research and study work it is good it is a fair use but if you are getting a printout or the photocopy of the entire book and using it uh, for your even academic purpose but it is not a fair use because you are going to harm their com commercial value so in a copyright act it also give you, you know, many, many, uh, you know, many, many, you know, freedom to use uh, a content for their research and academic purposes under the fair use, you know. Uh, reporting of current events and current affairs, including reporting on a public lecture, criticism and review, private or personal use including research section 52 1a is saying that if you are doing it for for example you are uh, you know subscribing times of india as the hindu newspaper and uh, one article of one one article may be used uh, for uh, circulating among other faculty members but if you are copying or downloading entire hindu paper and circulating with all the members of your institution that is not a fair use. So, part of that can be used. Uh, Section 52 1 ZB is being introduced in you know 2012 and it is for the persons with disabilities. So, reproduction you can do that for them and it's non profit, you cannot take any. Any, 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 anything, any monetary benefits from that person. Cost of the production, you can take it. For example, you are subscribing uh, ebooks content, and you can download a book. You can download a book. If the printing of or uh, uh, the photocopy of that downloaded book is uh, two hundred rupees, you can take two hundred rupees only with that visually uh, impaired student or the persons with the dis disabilities and you can use it. But at the same time, you have to take care of to who, for whom you are downloading it and providing it. For example, the person is disability with their uh, you know, legs only. And you are downloading the entire, entire you know, a book and giving it in and taking the charge of that that is not a fair use because that person is not having any problem with their eyes and their mind to read it so most of the time the digital content which is being downloaded and made available is uh, it is uh, uh, good for the person with the disabilities who are the visually impaired and then you see there is a compulsory license is also there so uh, the copyright infringement is there, but uh, there is an exception for the persons who are, you know, disabled. So even that that is, uh, you know, uh, having the commercial value, but but there is a process you have to apply in the copyright board to take a compulsory license to publish a work in an accessible format for the benefit of. For example, a book you are subscribing, uh, you have purchased by XYZ publisher and you have 10 visually impaired student and you want to convert into the you know, digital format. And the digital format of that book is not available. So for that, you can request to the copyright board that this is for the person with this uh, disability and you give only these students and those students will sign an agreement with the institution that they are not going to share it with anyone. In that way, you can take a compulsory license uh, from the copyright board for 
persons with disabilities and then there is a section 52 n so there is there is a, you know option for the libraries that they may legally store and use electronic copies suppose you are if you are having a subscription of any database and you want to download it you can the libraries can download it but the problem with this uh, section of the copyright act is if you are going to download any digital content you must have the physical copy of that content then only you can download it and you can download it only for the preservation purpose not for the dissemination purpose so libraries are allowed to download any subscribed or drm content only for the preservation purpose or storage purpose not for the dissemination purpose but the there is there is there is uh, you know caution that they must have a physical copy of that content if they are having a physical copy of that content then they can only download it and preserve it not to share or disseminate so if they are doing it then it is fair use so digital rights managements are directly uh, related to the fair use of a digital content as well so uh, this you all know you know the copyright versus the plagiarism so copyright is you know the creator's rights economic rights and uh, plagiarism is uh, you know the violation of the academic norms or the violation of you know uh, any 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 kind of uh, academic integrity so plagiarism is related to the academic integrity or infringement of the academic integrity and copyrights are, are are the economic and legal rights of a uh, creators or the original creators and uh, plagiarism against the plagiarism anyone can challenge but in the infringement of the copyright only copyright holder can challenge this is the basic difference so so in that purview i would say uh, digital rights management are a very sensitive issue right now and uh, everyone who are using it are disseminating it are preserving it they must go through the digital rights uh, you know the license of the content the contracts of the agreement with the uh, content and then they can use it in, in my case we have already this this uh, ppt uh, i have taken uh, some information some of the internet sources some of the reliable sources so it is not mine so that's why i have given it cc by nc so it is not for the commercial use but of course for the academic purposes it can be used if you have any query then definitely i will try to try to answer your query so uh, thank you uh, manish kumar ji so uh, we have listening uh, to your such kind of enlightening uh, about the uh, session so may i request this is the time for the interaction session time so may i request to the all participants uh, you may just uh, submit your query directly to dr bajpayee ji or you may furnish your query through chat box so this is the time for interaction session May I request all the participants, those who are 
available now in the floor. Please furnish your queries or question according to the today's deliberation by Dr. Bajpayee. Please. <laughs> I think not more question, uh, not to leave uh, all the participants are furnishing for ah, some, just, uh, someone is having question. some questions. I just want to see. We are waiting for you. Uh, while then, uh, so one uh, queries from Dr. Muhammad Sorifuddin. I am just, I, sir, you have mentioned FC judgment. Okay. What is the question? Ah, the, I, I, I mentioned that in Supreme, if you download a judgment from the Supreme Court of India, even other high courts, you will find there a captcha. So, captcha is used to in to decrypt a data which is which allows you to download, uh, you know, from that portal. So that is a, actually that captcha not only in, in a digital content. Uh, downloading or sharing, uh, you know, so you, you can see in a, you know, profile creating in Aadhaar card or profile creating in a PAN card or you know, income tax or you, if you apply somewhere, there is always in CAPTCHA, sometimes it asks you that it is not, uh, you are not a robot. So, so like this. So this is, this is an automatic encryption technology which is used to to protect a data from its misuse or its uh, you know mishand because we we all are living in a digital environment i would say in a, a cyber environment so cyber crime threat is also there so uh, i have your one question is there then would it be fair? yes if you download a uh, download a judgment from Supreme Court of India or any any government agency that is free from DRM. So you can share it, download it, use it. But the same judgment, if you are downloading it from any any commercial database, like All India Reporter, like Supreme Court cases, like Hand Online, Lexus Nexus, anywhere, if you download it and you are not a, a user of it, you are not a subscriber of that data, you cannot share it or you cannot use it. If you are doing it, means you are infringing, uh, you know, in, you are making, you are going to make the infringement against the copyright holder. So, from a public domain, like uh, EPG Parksala, Supreme Court of India, uh, you know, if you are going to download it, there is no issue and you can use it again and again. So, Bajpayee, I have just uh, just uh, observation and question. You all, you have already mentioned in your slide. Uh, those uh, tools are very bounding issues today, both uh, plagiarism as well as the copyright issues. Yeah. Just you have already mentioned in your slide. Just in a word for our audience, please uh, mention clearly the just basic differences in copyright and plagiarism. Okay. For example, I am giving, I am starting my, you know, answer with uh, example. Suppose uh, Dr. Kaushik has written a book, okay, and one of the 
paragraph i used but i have not mentioned that this paragraph is written by mr kosik a doctor kosik it means i was yeah i am indulged in plagiarism because we are not giving acknowledgement to the to the doctor kosik okay if and at the at the same time i am not acknowledging you at the same time the book written by you i am getting photocopy of all the entire book without taking permission from you because you are the copyright holder so copyright hold to uh, reproduce a document because there are some commercial rights or also because you you paid for the publication or you are getting the loyalty or royalty of that publication so we are infringing or we are violating your economic right so in that case if you are if i am copying all your getting photocopy of all your book means reproduction of your content so this is this is the violation of copyright and if i am using your content for that permission is not required a paragraph from your book i have used in my journal in article and if i am not mentioning your name not acknowledging you it means i am indulged in a plagiarism so this is the basic difference yes and if you uh, talk about the legal terms suppose i have photocopied your book so only you only you can file case against me none none can because you are a copyright holder only copyright holder can file case in the production case but i have copied but i have not given acknowledgement xyz can file a case means complaint against me so in in violation of academic integrity that is that is a plagiarism absolutely right absolutely right so if any question available in the chat box i have a question otherwise before going to our word of thanks may i request our university library uh, my chancellor shah he is now kosik i think sonam jankar sir is uh, like to ask something yeah sonam yeah sonam jankar thank you yeah thank yeah you, sir. i noticed so, thank you sir you may ask directly yeah yeah sure sir uh, so my question is uh, so please introduce jankar sir please introduce yourself this is sonam jankar Uh, I am an assistant professor in the Department of Indo-European Studies, Vishwarthi Shantiniketan. Right. So my question is to Dr. Manish Bajpayee sir. So your session was very nice and interesting. It's very beneficial for us. My question is that uh, it's very small question. For example, uh, uh, author who has published. lots of you know articles or research papers in different journals or different uh, chapters in a book and after that some years later for example 5 or 10 years later he want to collect all his own uh, articles or uh, you know research papers and uh, again it's published in a book way is there any copyright in that case yeah definitely because while you are publishing your articles in different journals okay yeah so you are giving copyright to the publisher so if you are going to bring all your articles hmm. in a in a in a book format first yeah. you have to take permission from the copyright holder in your case for example you publish 10 articles in 10 journals yes. one journal is published in uh, one journal is published by the vishwa bharti university another is our from rml in new journal and another from sage and wiley and etc and etc so all are having their copyright you you do not even you are a author yes but you are not a copyright holder of that content so yes. you cannot do that in that way if you want to bring all these uh, chapters in a uh, in a single book you have to take permission with all the publishers and if they free you from the copyright then only you can bring uh, 
uh, them in a book format. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Nimadan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think there is not much questions because to me it's just like a stepping stone to the academia that how during our academic journey we have to handle the issues of copyright, the issues of digital rights management, and the issues of IPA. Actually, Dr. Manish Pachwe very simply efficiently and informationally hook this three agenda in such a manner there is no much scope to ask question because he has not left any gap to ask anymore but what i learn is that how to handle these three core components nowadays we are living in a vicious step of academic journey every now and then like a corona infection we are having a trap any time we may arrest by any type of you know intentional or unintentional or unintentional willful or unwillful wrong in the academic arena the moment we do it it will give me so much of pain in addition to our career prestige in addition to our social prestige our upward movement in the career may also be damaged so before taking this three days agenda before you, I was very keen when I just thought to start this three days session, the first name came in my mind, none other than this Dr. Bajpayee, because during Corona, I have listened many of his thought provoking and efficient lecture. And from that, I was a great fan of him. So that's why whenever I thought to have a speech on IPR, I think Friendly Dr. Manish is the only who can give me an impetus on the issue at Vishwabharati through India and abroad. Why abroad? Today we have one participant from Egypt. So by, by number, uh, it may be uh, less unsatisfactory uh, quantity that is 40 or 45 is not a good number still. But if I think about the geographic location of the of the significance of this agenda. It's very instrumental as I think, because different states of India and in addition, different country of globe has been taken part of that. And I am really grateful Dr. Manish because of his generic mindset, open mindset through a single WhatsApp message. He gave me a response by 20 minutes. Yes, Nimaida, I am agreed to deliver my lecture. So this is the gesture of Indian allies professionals and academia too. Whenever we just going to take support from somebody else, he or she didn't think twice. As one library professionals from India asked me to give my impetus, so I will do. So Dr. Manish, I'm really grateful to you for your generic gesture. And I do solicit your same support in future course of our uh, journey. To, 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 you know, conceptualize the library in the society, conceptualize the DRM in the society, conceptualizing this IPR and other things, and near future, we'll arrange many more sessions. And I think I will not be deprived from your acceptance, and you will be with us, be it online, be it physical, we are eagerly waiting to arrange uh, any national uh, dais here. And of course, that time I will take your, uh, your your cooperation and your expertise on the field, not only IPR, but also in library science in general, because I know many things. I listen to your many lectures on different topics. So I eagerly waiting to have you in our campus physically or virtually. And I do solicit future cooperation, future support from you. And whenever I put in any travel in course of my library services, regarding IPI, regarding copyright infringement, regarding any legal issues. Since you are there, I don't feel any hesitate to call you to take your support. So thank you very much. And before winding it up, <coughs> let me request my colleague, Sir uh, Prasad Mojumda, internal scientist, to, to uh, uh, offer word of thanks as a matter of courtesy to all the resource person, the administration, and our 
pool of heart that is the participants from India abroad and Mishwarati too. So, Ram Prasadda, please take care about the word of thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, on behalf of the Shwati Library Network, I heartily convey my thanks to Dr. Manish Bajpaiji for your nice and informative speech. And I convey my thanks to our university librarian, Dr. Nimaichan Saha, to organize this type of uh, program every month. It is very effective to uh, all the uh, faculty members and all the research scholars also. I convey my thanks to the university authority to providing their permission and administration support for doing this type of program. And uh, thanks to the Koshik Ghosh, Dr. Koshik Ghosh, for their introductory service. And I convey my thanks to the, all the participants to organize, uh, to join these meetings and help us to increase the society information also. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Bajpaiji. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Nimada. Thank you so much and uh, for your kind words. And uh, you know, it's, uh, for uh, me, it's an opportunity to, to be associated with you all. I am really uh, very happy to be a part of uh, your program. Uh, because uh, I know I also heard uh, in many of the you know uh, lectures uh, during COVID-19 I come across with Dr. Nimai, and your vision is very good and your you know intention is very good, your purpose is very good, and that is going to be very very helpful to all of us. So I extend again my thanks to you, sir, and also congratulations to your team, Dr. Kausi Ghoshji. Uh, Dr. Ajayaji, Dr. Uh, uh, so to all entire the team, because your idea is very good, you are keeping it very crisp and uh, very short program, and that actually attracts everyone, I think. So it's a win-win situation for uh, all of us. I also used to learn many things from you all, guys. So looking forward uh, to meet you soon you all again and again. Thank you so much. Yeah, and before leaving from the online meeting, let me just seek your permission because you are a law librarian. So I had to seek your permission because yeah. we want, like to upload this video recording in our YouTube channel so that throughout the globe, people will get the accessibility of your thought-provoking lecture. I think you will allow us to do it. Please, sir, please. Okay, okay. So tomorrow, and I will send you the link of the lecture. Okay. So, sure, I will try to join you. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vasway. Good evening. Stay safe. Good evening. Thank you. Before all. going to conclude, I am announced the tomorrow session. So uh, thank you, Vasway ji. So thank we will you. meet you soon in physical mode. And tomorrow there is another session on effective utilization of e-resources to steer quality researchers by Dr. D. D. Lal, Delcon coordinator and head of the library, chief librarian, National Brain Research Center, NBRC. Manisar Gurga Bhariyala. So please, I am request to all the participants, those who are now available in the floor, please join and explore the news to your fellow researchers uh, so that uh, the uh, participants uh, will be increased in a sound number. So thank you very much, Paul. Let us, Jishnu Mondal, please conclude the today's session.